Hello, good afternoon to everybody. Uh, it is a very big pleasure for us uh, uh, to introduce our speakers from, uh, from ECB. In this case, I would say that uh, ECB, more than uh, our regulator, is our supervisor. Um, so thank you to Mr. Uh, Ramon Quintana and Ms. Maria Giulbe for uh, your participation. I uh, introduce Mr. Ramon Quintana. Uh, uh, he has a degree in economics and business studies. He uh, was the former director general of banking supervision of the Banco de España, and since 2014, he has a, was appointed to add one of the directorate general of SSM. Now, Mr. Quintana is uh, uh, Director General of uh, the St Systemic and International Banks. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Qu Quintana. And uh, let me introduce also Maria Giulbe. I hope that uh, the pronunciation is uh, correct. I am Italian, I, I don't know if uh, I am using the correct uh, pronunciation. Uh, Mrs. Julbe holds uh, a master's degree in business administration. She, she has uh, developed all her career in the field of banking supervision and regulation, and she do joined the ECB from its uh, inception in 2014 as well. She is the head of uh, division of non-financial risks at the SSM, within the Directorate General Horizontal Line Supervision. Very interesting for us, uh, Maria, um, uh, um, within non-financial risks, uh, covers a broad range of topics from governance and risk management, including anti-money laundering coordination unit, to operational risks, information and communication technology, and operational resilience. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much good for inviting me. Good afternoon. So it is very important uh, uh, for us, uh, very interesting. To uh, The attendees are uh, head of internal audit in the banking system of, uh, or senior manager within uh, other department. Uh, and it is very interesting for us to hear directly from you your view, your uh, suggestions, or your recommendation, your expectations. And it is very interesting uh, to uh, have your view, both for the systemic and the international banks, uh, but also from the horizontal perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, this morning during uh, our uh, uh, forum, uh, um, we had uh, a, a board member that uh, uh, suggested us uh, to have uh, a two ways relationship with, uh, uh, with you, with the supervisors. The, so a constant relationship with you. This probably is something very inspiring, very, very, very useful. And so I leave the floor to Paco okay. for the first question. Okay. Uh, hello, Maria and Ramon. Uh, but uh, first to make the, the first to ask you the first question, I would like to, to encourage uh, all the audience to use uh, Slido to use uh, to send us the the, the questions that um, uh, that they they uh, could have because uh, I think it's a privilege to to have today these two brilliant speakers from from the ECB so we have to the opportunity to 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 ask them uh, what, whatever you you consider and uh, and Ramon I would like just to to make um, uh, the first questions uh, related to the main uh, new risk that um, we have to face from the internal audit function um, you know that more difficult we have living uh, more difficulties in, uh, in 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 the world due to the geopolitical and macroeconomic uh, crisis and it implies more variety of uh, of risk uh, for uh, the banking system. So from your point of view, what are the risks uh, that the internal launch, uh, audit functions must be more focused on uh, on that moment at, uh, and in the near future? Okay, thank you very much. I hope that you can hear me uh, well. 
right? Yes, perfectly. And uh, thank you for inviting me again and good afternoon. I, If I'm not wrong, I was with you two years ago, so it's a real uh, pleasure. And, uh, and as I really believe that uh, uh, we are supervisors, so um, enhancing the, the control functions and all, in this case, the third line of defense um, is really relevant uh, for supervisors uh, in some way. Uh, we have the same uh, goal come, coming with sustainable institutions. Uh, that's uh, why it's a pleasure to be uh, with you. Well, it's very much about um, following and managing risks. Uh, these are very interesting times, uh, to say the least. Uh, perhaps I will start by saying that uh, we all faced uh, COVID way we are now, no? setting the scene. So we, we all went through through COVID-19, uh, where the economy of the world uh, due to the pandemic uh, stopped, uh, meaning in the end uh, a very uh, deep uh, decrease, although it was a V uh, decrease, um, stopping the, the economies and so on uh, with all the potential threats uh, that that could entail for the financial system. And we all uh, saw, and we have to acknowledge, and we have to welcome a very strong coordinated support by national and European uh, authorities and government uh, that helped to ease the crisis. So um, getting close to, to the end of 2021, so last year, we could say that uh, the financial system was, um, after this shock, in quite good uh, shape. Uh, I like numbers, so the, the CT1, uh, the capital position, on average was uh, of the significant institutions, 15%, so an ample room to MDA and to absorb P2G. Uh, in terms of liquidity, uh, due to the, among other reasons, the monetary policy uh, ample liquidity, LCR at around 165%, NSFR at around 130%. In terms of uh, of uh, capital, or sorry, of uh, asset quality, uh, the same could be said. So NPL have been going down consistently, and the banks were making effort to detach uh, NPLs uh, to the extent that by year end it was at 2.1 percent, uh, the NPL ratio, and the return on equity not the best uh, part of the uh, European financial system. We all know but had increased uh, after the dip in 2020 to 6.7% and is continue uh, increasing uh, this year. Not ideal, but uh, improving and better than uh, pre-pandemic. Um, and then uh, we had the, the outbreak of the war, uh, to some extent unexpectedly, we all know around mid-February 2022, and things com changed completely. Uh, so, um, both um, the, the the economic and the macro uh, uh, trends, um, the some issues that were uh, there uh, had been exacerbated, uh, uh, high inflation, uh, for example, and some imbalances and some vulnerable sectors being hit, as such, in energy prices um, and so on, uh, with the corresponding um, impact. Um, of course, uh, and, and sorry, I forgot to mention the monitor policy changing uh, the, the, the approach and also that having uh, certainly uh, implications. I'm pleased to say that when we come, I hope that's also your case in internal audit, when we came to uh, our priorities and we tried to set them uh, in a three-year horizon, they remain pretty uh, adequate, uh, although with some refocusing due to the war. Uh, the first thing that I would like to highlight is, of course, of course, credit risk. Credit risk was essential uh, every time that GDP fell down uh, so uh, uh, um, strongly and there are tensions in the economy. Credit risk is at uh, the top of our concerns, uh, is the main risk that uh, banks are facing so remains as a key area of uh, focus uh, probably uh, rebalancing some aspects uh, i would uh, highlight um, uh, the relevancy of credit risk controls uh, you know that we um, we made a big effort uh, with the tseo letter and all the um, horizontal work uh, to try to understand how the banks were uh, looking at um, 
forbearance, uh, unlikeliness to pay, recognition, and migration to stage two and uh, stage three, uh, uh, early warning systems, and, and so on. So that uh, still plays an important role. And you know that we came with follow up letters to each of the institutions. Uh, so all the work around enhancing. Uh, the credit risk uh, controls is, is still is very uh, valid. Of course, the, cri the crisis has brought um, some uh, vulnerable vulnerabilities to credit risk. I would highlight perhaps uh, a credit counterparty risk and uh, the non-bank financial institutions risk, energy suppliers, uh, commodity traders, and all the sectors that are intensive in, in energy and that can suffer from um, the lack of energy uh, supply and uh, the rise in in, in prices. Uh, I would also, regarding credit risk, uh, highlight, um, you know, that this is something that uh, the ECB has putting, been putting a lot of emphasis over time, uh, leverage uh, lending. We've seen some developments. We've seen a halt in the business every time that uh, there are tensions in the market, leverage uh, finance uh, business uh, suffers. We've seen American banks and some uh, um, European banks uh, recognizing at fair value some uh, losses due to the Hong uh, deal. So it's a, it's a point of, of attention uh, also. Um, I mentioned credit risk, but certainly uh, uh, the, the monetary policy is changing the, uh, the approach. Uh, so everything around sound funding structures uh, is, is going to become uh, even more crucial than over the last two years, where there was ample uh, liquidity. We all know that uh, TLTROs are maturing um, and concentrating its maturity in June 2023. Uh, we are going to see a, a rise in interest uh, uh, and uh, potentially the reduction of the liquidity available. So uh, uh, achieving sound funding structures is something that uh, uh, will be very important to, to follow. We all know that an increase in interest rates can benefit uh, banks, uh, depending on how they are positioned, but in general for commercial banking and retail banking is a, a good piece of news. But we have to follow how these uh, interest rates are going to unfold, whether this uh, increase is going to be bumpy or more uh, um, sustainable over time. Um, so uh, uh, so following the short term implications uh, might also be important. Um, and of course, uh, when we talk about uh, uh, the uh, profitability, and I mentioned that uh, unfortunately it's not one of the strengths of the European banks, and that has implications also in the low, low price to book value. Uh, in terms of sustainability, it's very much about uh, ensuring a sound digitalization going forward and transition to a decarbonized uh, uh, society. So th those areas are very important also uh, forward looking. Um, and every time that uh, there is a crisis, uh, we know that from the the risk perspective is in is important uh, to to come with the right uh, capabilities. So you know that the long lasting issues around uh, risk data aggregation and reporting remain very valid, and uh, banks have to make an additional effort in this uh, situation to beef up it, their uh, capabilities. Um, and of course, uh, in a in a difficult geopolitical environment, uh, cybersecurity capabilities, cybersecurity threats uh, are uh, essential. Every time that we talk to to each of you, and certainly after the outbreak of the war, it's at the heart of your concerns and of your. Uh, of the work undergone. And so far, uh, I think that we can all be very happy uh, that we haven't seen uh, really big incidents, despite the fact that we are seeing in, in half one 2022, certainly an increase in the, in the attacks, although uh, so far uh, well um, handled. And uh, you mentioned operational resilience uh, is in the headlines of uh, this, uh, um, is gathering and uh, uh, how banks uh, manage outsourcing uh, is, 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 is key and essential uh, to ensure 
that uh, even in this geopolitical environment, uh, these outsourcing works and all the main risks associated to any kind of concentrations are already uh, properly uh, dealt with. Um, I will stop here. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thanks, Ramon, for your for your uh, answer. Um, Maria, would you like to add um, something to what uh, to what Ramon has said, um, especially on on outsourcing or cybersecurity um, risk? I, I I think on, on operational resilience, uh, I will uh, touch base a, a bit later, but I think it's clear that uh, uh, some years ago or decades ago, we were just thinking about financial resilience and clearly operational resilience is, if not more, but at least as equal as important uh, uh, for banks and for the financial stability. No, what I would like is, is to, um, to call out one thing is that uh, it's, it's just to use this opportunity and this fora and all of you here in front of me know that sometimes we tend to think about new or emerging risk. And I think we should not forget those risks that have been there since many years, I would say, and still not sorted out, uh, of course, with difference across uh, institutions. No, and, and I think you mentioned that uh, I'm the head of division of non-financial risk, but I think it's fair to say also that one of the SSM priorities that we have for 2022-2024 relates to governance. No, And I think organizations cannot work if the people, I think we talk about processes and here on processes we will talk about operational resilience, but if the people, no, and the people said from the management body to the whole organization, the culture, and we still see that there are some weaknesses that uh, are to be addressed, no, and, and in terms of uh, collective stability of challenging capacity of the board, I think Ramon mentioned risk data aggregation as part of it, but I, I didn't want to miss the opportunity to call some of these structural weaknesses where I think internal audit can, can play a big role here. Okay. Thank you, Maria. Claudio. Well, uh, the next uh, question is uh, for Ramon. Uh, Banks uh, continually face a variety of challenges, the digital revolution, climate change, the geopolitical uncertainty, as you uh, have already mentioned. Um, well, how do you assess the resilience uh, of the European banking system in, in general? And then uh, we want to know if uh, there are uh, new regulation planned or expected to ensure more resilience in the Eurozone. No, thank you. Um, from time to time, we, we, we conduct um, market intelligence um, um, uh, meetings and interactions, and uh, we are pleased to hear uh, from many participants, and this was uh, the last one uh, just before the outbreak of the war, uh, of the good financial condition of uh, the European system in terms of resilience. No, So uh, I mentioned capital that... Uh, 15%. I remember that uh, when we started um, the SSM back in 2014, it was at 11, uh, the CT1, so a, a big um, improvement and, uh, um, and, 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 and well distributed uh, in terms of a number of institutions, so not many have a difficult situation in terms of, uh, of capital. I mentioned also uh, the quality of assets. Let's take uh, the NPL ratio. So I mentioned that it's currently even below, according on average uh, to, to latest numbers, uh, below 2%. And we all know that in 2014, we all talked about uh, the, the 1 trillion no, of NPLs and uh, around 8% of NPL ratio on average, um, uh, acknowledging that uh, uh, the NPL topic was more acute in six jurisdictions, not uh, disseminated across the Eurozone. Uh, so a big improvement. And I like to think that it's a combination of uh, the, the pressure put into into the topic by uh, supervisors uh, and also all the good work done by, done by institutions. Liquidity, and it uh, was also mentioned, so ample liquidity enhanced by and fostered by the monetary policy, uh, so uh, uh, also uh, good. And then the profitability issue uh, that remains uh, part of the weaknesses of, uh, weakness of the financial system, although we saw improvements uh, in terms of uh, cost to income actions uh, taken, uh, although uh, the, the latest average that we see in terms of return on equity is 7.5 in Q2, uh, which we all know is lower than the cost of capital. That's why 
uh, we see a low price to book value. But in general, the 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 situation uh, is uh, good as a starting point. And uh, as uh, I was mentioning, information related to, to the end of the year 2021 or even more updated in half one 2022, this means that going through uh, COVID uh, times in 2020 and 2021. Uh, um, in terms of um, the uh, the adaptation to digitalization, to climate that you were mentioned, uh, we have conducted uh, different uh, initiatives uh, to to raise awareness. I would highlight uh, the stress testing uh, uh, on climate and also the the, the thematic uh, review. Um, Yes, we all know that there's still room for improvements. Uh, uh, this is a, a long marathon, 2030, 2050, and, uh, and uh, banks uh, have different, um, um, I mean, initiatives, but in general, uh, we, we would say that uh, there is uh, naturally room for improvement, so it's something to, to be followed and to be enhanced. Uh, the digitalization efforts are clear for all banks uh, following different structures, but that's working, uh, let's say, reasonably well. Uh, although um, we would highlight that uh, uh, one of the weaknesses of the European financial system is the IT. Uh, um, uh, we still see uh, end of life uh, uh, technologies and frameworks for critical functions that, ha that has to be improved. But uh, I really believe that it's not so much about uh, uh, new regulation, and we know there are some developments that naturally have to happen in Europe. Uh, I will say the, certainly the implementation of Basel III. Uh, we know that uh, there is a DORA uh, initiatives uh, that might uh, uh, come up. Um, it's it's very much uh, more about, and certainly related to, to climate, uh, in, in particular the transitional risk, but it's very much about um, uh, targeting uh, and addressing uh, the risks uh, in terms of uh, supervisory focus, or if it's about uh, uh, an, an institution, uh, the, the efforts of the second and the third line of defense, no? so being focused. Uh, that's why setting the, the right priorities, uh, adapting to the uh, risks that are changing in this difficult environment are uh, are essential. Um, I would uh, uh, highlight in terms of uh, regulatory initiatives uh, the, regarding climate, uh, the recent uh, document on, of the Basel Committee, uh, the principles for the effective management and supervision of climate-related financial risks. Also, uh, the EBA uh, published binding standards on Pillar 3. And um, and also mentioned DORA. In terms of um, uh, the implementation of Basel III, not surprisingly, you know that the ECB is very much enhancing a sound implementation and a quick implementation closer uh, as possible to the Basel uh, framework and uh, uh, so being effective in that uh, transition. And finally, I would perhaps also mention the, the effort that we are doing in Europe in terms of uh, all the uh, programs to repair uh, models. I will take, uh, I will mention the EBA initiative, but also all the initiatives that have been undertaken by uh, the ECB since I would say uh, 2015, 2016, all the trim initiatives and uh, all the EMEs uh, that are taking place uh, to ensure that uh, the models are deployed in a in a strong way. Thank you very much. Okay, <clears throat> okay um, let's move on to the strategic evolution of the internal audit uh, role. I would like to, to ask uh, to Maria, um, more variety of risk implies a more flexibility expected by the internal audit function. Uh, what are your suggestions in, in, in this regard? How and where uh, do you consider that the role of the internal audit uh, should uh, evolve? And finally, which could, the, the, which could be the right uh, balance between uh, assurance and advisory applied by an effective uh, in, uh, internal audit function? Thank you very much, Paco. So first of all, 
let me highlight what we would in general expect, let's say, from internal audit. No, So we would, uh, as independent third line of defense, we would like to ensure the clarity of the roles and responsibilities at all levels, no, from the board to senior management to all the staff. We would like to understand and to ensure uh, that the three line of defense model is effective with independent and strong control functions focus on the efficiency of the internal control framework and ensure that audit recommendations are followed up. No? And I think this would be right uh, no matter the, uh, the, the, the risk uh, that the, the internal audit and the organization uh, is facing. No? And uh, let's say the cornerstones of, the, of the, the role of the internal audit function is there. We also understand that the internal audit needs to adapt to the changing environment. No? And, and, and we have seen that uh, couple of examples very recently, no, the COVID and the war. So, for example, on the planning processes, uh, so although we require or, or, or we expect that internal audit function need to have a stable audit planning process, you might need to adapt during the year, no, uh, coming from external events. As again, as I mentioned, the pandemic or the war. And without flexibility, you would not be able to do that. And flexibility was shown uh, during the pandemic, no, where the whole uh, audit plan was changed as a result of this. Adapting to new risk, you mentioned it before, and of course it is clear that internal audit functions need to cover the risk that the banks are facing now. No, So uh, moving from, let's say, the traditional operational and financial risk uh, that Ramon mentioned before to climate-related and environmental risk, uh, the whole ESG scope, uh, the stress testing that was mentioned before, IT, cyber, where governance system, processes of ICT, uh, vendors, not just outsourcing in general, but third party providers, no? all of this, and security risk, which was mentioned before also, are expected to be audited on a periodic basis. Some other activities where we would expect internal audit to play a role on new financial technologies if they are, uh, if the bank start uh, engaging with them, no crypto asset activities, for example, being one of them, or cloud, for example. So banks should ensure an internal audit should ensure that the internal governance, the arrangement, and the processes and the mechanisms are effective. But also the internal audit should leverage on new technologies. And here, uh, I guess that you will all know much more than me of the tools and the automatization that you can rely on to be much more efficient in your work and to be able less, to be a bit more risk-based and be more effective and efficient. And I think one of the points that uh, Ramon mentioned before is on the strategic transformation of the banks. It's clear that in the current environment, banks are undergoing a clear strategic uh, transformation and internal audit should accompany the banks in this. If I answer, if I go to your specific question between the assurance and the advisory role, I think this is probably not an, not an easy one to raise to me, <laughs> but I will try to do my best to answer. So it is clear that internal audit, at least in my view, can play a role uh, in advising some of the strategic projects. No, and it's clear that this, in my view, would have a lot to do with the role, the presence, and the status that internal audit would have within the organization. If nobody asks internal audit, it's because or things are not going well or internal audit does not have the proper status. So we would also welcome this, uh, let's say, advisory role of internal audit. But this advisory role, I think, need to come uh, with some caveats and with some conditions. And the third line of defense, I think the key principle of them is that it should be independent, no? And I think this advisory role should not jeopardize this independency that is critical, no? And I think the ABA guidelines on governance and the, the Basel principles uh, on the supervising the internal audit functions are very clear about this and on the charter and what should be the terms and conditions in which internal audit can advise the banks uh, on things and also acknowledging the role that internal audit has to play on this, no? And, and here, let me call out, I think it's the, the principle two on the, 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 the Basel core principles that say that internal audit should not be involved in designing, selecting, implementing a specific internal control measures. However, it should not prevent senior management from requesting info from internal audit, no? And I think clearly uh, you have an important role and you have a transversal knowledge of the organization and, 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 and a lot of value added out of, out of, out of this. So again, I think uh, my answer would be that uh, internal audit function would have a role to play on advice, but with caveat. And I think, uh, let's say, in, in our view, the main role of internal audit is would be on, on assurance, uh, on 
evolving risk and evolving organization, no? and, and of course on this uh, the internal audit functions need to yeah need to be flexible, need to to adapt to the new emerging risks uh, that are coming uh, along with the with the organization. Something that has proven that that, that you have been doing that uh, for quite some time. Okay, Maria, thank you very much for your clear answer. <laughs> And I would like uh, to ask to Ramon if uh, would you like to, to add something or to to share with us your points of this uh, topic? I uh, I think that uh, Maria was very uh, balanced. No, when uh, particularly in a crisis situation, uh, all the efforts uh, to ensure that uh, an institution is addressing properly. Uh, all the challenges associated to such crises are, are very valid. No? So for me, this means that uh, all um, expertise in the uh, organization is, is needed. Each of the different elements, I'm talking now about control, so the, all the three lines of defense have to be proactive, including um, internal audit and, uh, and whether we call it the role of advice or um, uh, a more uh, proactive approach um, uh, to ensure that uh, the institution is taking the right decisions are very much uh, welcome, of course, not undermining uh, your independence, that is essential. But uh, th the same could be applied many times when we discuss, discuss the, the supervisory function and the, the management function of the management body. If they are too, too departed from each other and the supervisory function comes too late, uh, uh, then they will not be doing the, the work. No, and those, of, of course, it's in a similar way, ensuring their independence for the management function, but uh, being close to what really matters and uh, allowing the institution in the end to, to take the, the right actions in due course, not too late. No, So uh, finding such a right balance is, is essential and uh, acknowledging all the, and benefiting from all the expertise, including uh, the one in internal audit is also uh, key in this regard. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you, Ramon. At the beginning of uh, your speech, you mentioned uh, all the crises that we are, are facing. Uh, one specific question, uh, how, what kind of role would uh, the internal audit have in your opinion during uh, a, a crisis? Well, firstly, uh, I think that it's important uh, to, to have the right uh, basics, no? Uh, and that uh, uh, are put more into question in a crisis a situation, not only related to the third line of defense, but in, in, in general. No? So I'm talking about uh, having um, a, a board, uh, an honorary committee uh, that is uh, effective, uh, uh, an institution and uh, the board that ensures, uh, in this case, the, the right uh, stature of internal audit, uh, the right um, organizational setting, the right uh, resources uh, from the human perspective, so skills, um, uh, staff, uh, um, all that is uh, essential um, uh, to ensure uh, that internal controls, uh, where internal audit plays uh, an important role also, uh, are uh, effective. And of course, insurance, uh, the right independence of the, of the internal audit. So, all these elements are essential um, over time and uh, and every time. No, and, but in a crisis situation, becomes uh, it become even more important. Uh, then, moving to the crisis situation, I would highlight, uh, and I mentioned it before, everyone should be proactive. No, and uh, understanding the the nature of the crisis, which are the the emerging risks, which are the, the, the most important impacted parts of the organization, and then be ready to refocus your work uh, to, uh, to uh, not to come into what really matters and the main risks too late. Uh, that would be my, my general um, recommendation, no? And, uh, at all levels, so at the level of uh, the, the function, internal audit function, and also at the level of the audit committee, uh, uh, ensuring that uh, all these uh, 
of these um, overarching elements that uh, the, the audit function have to fulfill uh, to ensure its strength uh, are there and that because they are even more important in a crisis uh, situation. Um, yeah, so back to, to the principles and being uh, really proactive no, in terms of uh, dealing with the crisis. Th those would be the, the two main recommendations from my side. I don't know if Maria wants to add anything. Oh, Ramon, I think you cover. No, I think it, it's somehow included in what you mentioned, the forward-looking dimension. No, that you need to have as much as possible in this, in these fast-moving scenarios. Really. Okay. Then um, we have been uh, uh, talking about the resilience. Uh, let's move to the operative resilience and the role of internal audit. Uh, I have a question to to Maria uh, related with the new regulation with the the famous uh, DORA. You know, um, DORA affects uh, technological, operational, and uh, outsourcing risk. Uh, but do you consider there are uh, other risk uh, or other critical aspect uh, that the auditor should take into account to assess the, the resilience capacity of a financial institution? Maria? Yeah. I, I would say so. No, I think indeed uh, you mentioned Dora before, and, and and well, first of all, it's clear as I mentioned before that operational resilience is uh, now as important as financial resilience. No, and Dora, which uh, will be implemented in the in the near future. No, I think uh, finally the text is almost finalized. Um, covers a partial aspect of operational resilience, not all, no? So DORA really covers the ICT operational risk dimension of operational resilience related to digitalization, no? And of course, it will enhance uh, the framework and the operational resilience, not just of banks, no? Because DORA is not only addressed uh, to credit institutions, but to a large number of financial institutions that uh, maybe before didn't have uh, such a framework that uh, some of the credit institutions have, no? But DORA will enhance the requirements for uh, detection, management, and notification of ICT-related incidents. Uh, it will start an oversight framework of uh, ICT third-party providers, okay? It will establish uh, some requirements uh, in relation to contractual arrangements for those ICT, and it will establish a test, uh, a threat uh, to, to deal with this uh, digital uh, operational resilience, no? However, I think you uh, rightly pointed out that the financial institutions might face uh, operational disruptions beyond ICT or ICT outsourcing risk, no? And, and we are seeing this, uh, and, and clear examples has been in relation to the climate change, all the floods that we saw in the previous summer or the fires that we have seen uh, this summer, no? Or other geopolitical events, uh, for example, the war uh, is a clear example uh, of this that can create operational disruption uh, beyond IT, no? So, although not, not undermining the importance of DORA, which is uh, critical and, and, and will be very beneficial for us, I would like to take the opportunity also to highlight a bit more the, the Basel Core principles on operational resilience no? okay. uh, and the role that internal audit should play on this and, and, and the fact that banks and organizations need really to, to embark in a journey to ensure that they are uh, operational uh, resilience. No, it's clear that disruption will happen uh, and, and, and this will not be, it's impossible to avoid this, but what we need to do is to minimize the impact of this ration for the institutions, for the customers, and for the society. No, so I think, of course, uh, the Basel Core principles cover many things, and and it's not starting from scratch. We already have an operational risk management framework that sets the scenes uh, of all of this. But I think there are two areas where probably uh, are uh, might be a bit uh, new or a bit uh, enhanced as part of this, which is the let's say the business continuity and the incident response. And I think on this, probably uh, the whole organization and internal audit can play a role to ensure the upskilling uh, of, uh, of these things. No? And for example, in relation to business continuity plans, 
I mean, the banks need to establish a plausible but severe scenarios, no? So I think internal audit, you can help on this, you can help on the exercise, no? And, and assess and assure the business continuity exercise uh, that has been done on the identification on the critical operations and on all the interconnections and interdependencies on this, no? And on the business impact analysis. So I think this is something that goes a bit beyond uh, DORA. And then, of course, on incident response also, I think uh, this goes uh, beyond, um, beyond DORA, and I think it would be good to, to, to focus a bit on this uh, Basel Core principles we were published in, in 2021. And then I think one point that, that I think is important, and Ramon mentioned a bit before, is on, on some of the of the things that, that we are seeing that uh, might not be so fashion because they are not new, but uh, these uh, end of life systems, uh, the legacy IT systems, for example. No? So we tend to think about digitalizations or sometimes I, I know that we all have this in mind, but we forget some of the things. And if I think about operational resilience, one, one of the things and, and, uh, that we are seeing is that a number of disruptions and a number of failures of IT systems come not for cyber incidents, but for improper change management. And I think nobody can today not say that change is not good. And, and with all the digital transformation projects, there are a number of uh, projects within the organizations, but it's, it's, it's just a, a a bit, uh, yeah, yeah, just for your information that we are seeing on change management. So I think, again, the, the back to basics and that the, the bones need to be well in place before we start building on top of it, no? So I think those would be the, a, a couple of ideas to bring to the table today. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. I would go to the, uh, a last question, very, very important for us. You, Maria mentioned... Uh, some weaknesses in the governance of, of the banking system. Uh, this morning we, we uh, listened from the board members uh, about uh, how to assess the effectiveness of the internal audit function. And uh, one of the board members uh, answered, uh, okay, uh, no findings from the authorities is uh, the good way to to um, <laughs> confirm that the internal audit is effective, okay? <laughs> but uh, she asked uh, us to, to have a, a, a strong support uh, in forward-looking view um, in order to support the, the, the board members. So the, the question uh, to both of you is for us very important. Uh, um, how should the, the board uh, of director assess the internal audit effectiveness? Okay, I, I can I, I can start. Um, well, it's very much uh, connected, and now we are in a in a crisis environment. Uh, so, setting the the right priorities for, from our perspective, uh, I was mentioning that we we. Uh, we come with multi-year plans um, that we um, adapt uh, every uh, every year, uh, trying to target uh, um, uh, the, the main risks uh, of structural nature and the emerging ones. So I suppose internal audit, uh, when proposing the the audit work plan, um, should uh, should do the same. Um, and then, of course, uh, this uh, should be assessed by. Um, by the, the audit committee that uh, I recommend uh, them to be uh, intrusive and uh, challenging uh, uh, this uh, work plan. Um, when coming with a work plan, of course, it's very much about, um, again, uh, the back to basics, no? is internal audit uh, properly um, skilled, staffed to address the challenges does it have? Uh, the right uh, stature, so these are uh, prerequisites uh, to ensure a good internal audit uh, function, a third line of uh, defense. Um, I like to think that, that is, if that is the case, uh, the internal audit would come with a, an adequate program to phrase uh, the, the main risks of, uh, of uh, the institution and then should be properly followed by uh, the audit um, uh, board. Um, 
then it's about uh, executing uh, properly uh, uh, the plans and uh, and uh, informing properly uh, the different elements of the institution coming with uh, clear uh, outcomes and uh, follow-up actions and uh, with a strong uh, process and framework uh, to ensure that uh, these follow-up actions are, uh, are risk-based and are scored in terms of the relevancy as we try to do also from our uh, reviews and that they are properly fo followed and informed um, and uh, that uh, the, the, uh, the audit function is enhanced uh, within the organization, uh, meaning that uh, the follow-up matters and if uh, a business area or even um, some uh, important uh, center business lines are not following such instructions that should have implications in terms of uh, of uh, appraisal and uh, bonuses even and in the end uh, in terms of uh, how uh, these business areas and the managers are um, assessed. So I will stop here. Perhaps uh, I would mention that in our uh, SREP approach, uh, we also, the JSTs have to uh, assess the, the control function. And um, uh, when we compare to uh, the, uh, the second line of, uh, of defense, uh, you score uh, slightly better, I would say. Uh, uh, just to let you know. So I will stop here and perhaps uh, Maria want to compliment. Thank you, Ramon. I think you really covered the main uh, topics for assessing the, the effectiveness of internal audit. I, I think one thing that is important for us as supervisor, but uh, probably is, this is not only for internal audits, but for the whole organization is that we are on the same page. And we will discuss, of course, with uh, the institution, with internal audit, with uh, re-expansion, with the first line of defense, but we need to ensure that we are on the same page. If we are on the same page and it's just a question of timing of the things on many topics or whatever, I think we can have a conversation. No, If, if we are uh, talking about two different banks, then I think uh, we have more work to do, both the supervisor and probably the internal audit and the organization. But I think this is, uh, yeah, that's it really. Yeah. And I would say, sorry uh, to compliment further, um, that um, you, you were mentioning that uh, a board member uh, told you this morning that uh, the more the the supervisor satisfied that the better for internal audit and the control functions in general. I couldn't agree more. And I was uh, mentioning uh, our priorities in terms of this crisis. So the more being more concrete, no, the more you look into how the bank is dealing with vulnerable sectors, uh, the, the, the sectors in, intense in, in energy, how the bank is recognizing onlineness to pay migration to, to stage two under IFRS 9, um, uh, how the bank is adapting its funding structures, how the bank is dealing with pockets of uh, credit risk that might be relevant and leverage uh, uh, lending and how the, the bank or the institution marks to market and how it, do, it, it deals with the hung deals, how you in the end uh, assess the provisioning um, individual and collectively under IFRS 9 uh, that will ease our work and will will pay off. Uh, and, and I would recommend you to be bold. I know that some of these issues like uh, the adequate provisioning and recognition of, uh, of um, uh, impaired uh, or um, an early warning um, loans is, is a delicate topic. Uh, and even more if we are talking about uh, big tickets, but I would recommend you to be bold in your work. Okay, Ramon and Maria, thank you very much. Uh, uh, let's move on to the questions for the audience. Um, we should uh, see them in the screen. Um, well, the first one is, uh, what do we have to change in our methodology to meet your expectations of flexibility and, uh, and adaptability to risk in order to not be challenged audit coverage? It's a <laughs> tricky question. <laughs> Maria or Ramon or whoever you want. Do you want to start, Maria? 
<laughs> I can take it. No, don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> I, I don't think there is a, a requirement, let's say, or, or a need to, to change the methodology. No, I think uh, the supervisors go where the risks are, the organization or the, the, the second and the third line of defense should also go where the risks go and, and should be risk-based and should focus or, or where they are. No, And of course, uh, uh, both the second line, uh, the second line has a, a different role than the third line, which is again is, is providing assurance. It's not defining uh, the risk uh, framework of the bank, but providing assurance, forward-looking assurance. I would say it's not just. And for me, this is, I think, an important uh, point of, of internal audit when you can provide uh, value added to the organization. It's not just to test a, a transaction and say, "Hi guys, this was wrong and uh, this not," but really to provide forward-looking uh, to ensure that. Uh, that the, the risk coverage in the future is 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 good. Whether you will be challenging your audit coverage, I don't know if it, this is a question for the supervisor because the JST <laughs> is saying the internal audit should have covered this. Or of course, we will always say that, but also you need to understand that this is a role to to do that. And I think for me the point we go back to back to basics. No, and I think the point that I mentioned uh, before. Uh, and that uh, I guess in, in your role as internal audit of the banks, you have had several discussions with the supervisors and you know where you are in the same page and you know where there are fundamental disagreements or fundamental areas or fundamental subsidiaries that have not been looked at. No, and I think this is the the, the clear uh, point. Uh, the internal audit should be risk-based. Scope cannot be 100%, otherwise it would not be a scope. Okay, so we will not be talking about the scope and about sampling. And I think uh, for me it's uh, yeah, risk-based and common sense, I would say. Mm -hmm. Ramon, I don't know if you want to. No, no, uh, certainly. And uh, in, in a crisis situation, uh, it's a little bit what we just uh, mentioned, not just being uh, refocusing is something that up to some extent we could even expect. No, And I, I, I like to think that uh, nobody from the supervisor perspective should, should blame you from uh, uh, rethinking your, your, your focus and adapting to the to the uh, risk situation and be more uh, being more risk focused. No, I like to think that we will never blame you for that on on the country. No. So. The, the next question, Ramon, is, is good for you. Uh, <laughs> audit is increasingly uh, becoming an extension of the supervisor. Do you recognize that? Uh, uh, and uh, is that a problem for the independent third line? L let me say that, uh, in my opinion, it is very important uh, our role in uh, assure to the ECB uh, the status of the remediation on the, your findings. Um, uh, in my opinion, it is uh, more important that the internal audit uh, assesses uh, before the, the ECB. We can be less intrusive, and it is not a problem from my point of view of uh, losing our independence because uh, we can uh, we can support uh, our uh, um, uh, board of directors, our top managers in being more uh, aware about the importance of uh, uh, certain things. So it is not, uh, uh, um, uh, it, it is something very related to our, to our mission mm -hmm. and our role, I think. I, I couldn't agree more. And uh, we also try to be um, focused when we come with uh, a, an on-site or a, de a deed back that can trigger uh, follow-up uh, uh, actions and recommendations or decisions and it's true you're right no that we rely more and more on internal audit uh, work to uh, to uh, to check if uh, the uh, the remediation remediation actions uh, have uh, taken place and uh, we request this from internal audit not from other parts of uh, the bank, so uh, acknowledging uh, your independence and your role as third line of uh, defense. No, we don't request this from the second line, we request it from from you um, normally. And I also like to think that um, it's very much connected to, uh, up to some extent, to what uh, your board member recommended to you this morning. No, so it's uh, the more we we are able to work together, the the, wet, the better. So we have the same goal. So to ensure that the risks are properly handled, and you you play um, within the organization. Um, 
the a third line, uh, you are the most independent, uh, acknowledging that you belong still to the organization. So uh, that's why we, we we rely on you, and I agree, and I like your words, no, and what you said. So uh, it's not uh, hindering your independence, but uh, it's a way of working together in the benefit of your institution. No, that's like we would like we we like to see it, of course. We know that this is challenging. Uh, the more we uh, inform you in advance of this work uh, to be done, the, the more we give uh, reasonable deadlines to do that work, uh, the better, no? Because of course that hinders your um, your plans, uh, your uh, your annual plans or, or middle-term plans. Uh, so this is uh, something that should be considered from our side, no? And uh, and if this kind of um, uh, uh, work to be done by internal audit uh, provides or hinders your your approach. Uh, we should discuss it. No, so in in for for each institution, of course. No. Okay. Thank you, Ramon. One more question for for Maria uh, related what we uh, asked you before about assurance and the, the assurance and advisory role that the, the internal audit function has to play. Uh, to what uh, um, what's a, it's an appropriate role for internal audit when participating in various committees in the bank? Well, I think the answer would be um, a bit the same, and I think I, I would link it also very much to the point that uh, I don't know if it was you or, or Ramon mentioned a bit before also on the on the status of the internal function. No, of course, I, I do not need to explain what is the role of internal audit in the audit committee. No, this is this is very clear. But of course, in, in my view, internal audit should play a key role also in the board directly, and also uh, from time to time it should play a key role in the nomination committee if it's something is being discussed that is relevant or where internal audit should. Play play a role, or in the remuneration committee also, if there has been something in related to the remuneration scheme or specifically that relates to this. So I think um, while understanding that, uh, and I think this links somehow to one of the slides, uh, to one of the questions that is real, that, uh, that is there on how much can internal audit rely or leverage on the work of the risk function. And it's the same question that how much is the supervisor reliant on the work of the internal audit function. We have the same organization and the same risk universe, no? And we are all working from a different perspective and from a different situation, I would say, but on the same thing. So, of course, I think we need to rely on, on each other, you more than us, and let's say internally on the on the organization, and we need to have a close communication. The better the, se the first line of defense, the easiest the work for the second line, and the easiest the work for the third, and the easiest the work for the supervisor, no? So I think for me this is more or less uh, the same. Of course, uh, internal audit function should play a key role uh, and should have a say uh, in, the, in the relevant board committees uh, there, and in the the rest of the committees of the bank, if I, I was just thinking, to be honest, on the question on the board committees, but if it's not board committees, but management committees, also, again, with the, with the point on the independence and objectivity and the voting rights and, and all of this, but of course, it's a key stakeholder and a key player in an organization. Okay, thank you. Okay, we are receiving a, a lot of questions, but uh, due to, to, to time, short time, we, we have a space only for the last one if possible to, to show it. Um, it's very interesting. It, it has uh, something to do with uh, our plan, more risk-based or more coverage-based. It is something important for us. It's uh, very um, important, uh, your opinion. Uh, and the, the question is uh, um, if we should move towards agile planning to ensure timely reflection to changes in business environment. Uh, we, we are aware that we must be very uh, focused on the risks, the new risk, as you as, uh, said, but uh, at the same time, we have to uh, guarantee a, a certain coverage. What is, in, in your opinion, the, the right balance uh, uh, in this uh, situation that probably in the near future we will have to face uh, more and more often? I can start. Uh, I think you you just mentioned uh, uh, before giving us the floor. No, so it's uh, it's about the right balance, and, uh, and then it's up to each institution to to define um, that. So and up to some extent, 
we also apply it to ourselves. So uh, I was mentioning that uh, we, we do this exercise of uh, coming with uh, multi-year plans, um, three-year horizon, but we adapt them every year. And we are happy to see that uh, uh, even in such a crisis situation, uh, of course, we have to fine tune, we have to refocus some things, but the big themes have remained there because uh, don't come um, as a surprise. No, So uh, I would always recommend you to be risk-based, to be honest, uh, uh, of course, with the corresponding uh, balance and uh, and reasonable coverage. But if you, if you are not risk-based, particularly in a crisis situation, you will come too late, no, and that uh, won't help your uh, organization. So um, how to address issues in your course and not uh, too late and um, maintaining while well, maintaining your independence is uh, is key. You no, know? but I, if I were to to choose uh, 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 the balance, I would always recommend you to be risk based, as we try also to be risk based. But uh, Maria. No, nothing, nothing else. I think the balance and the and the risk base and, and each situation will speak on its own. No, so really nothing that you can plan ahead is these two words. I think are the key ones. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Perhaps so, a, a, an anecdote I remember that doesn't refer to to internal audit, but I remember that once in a in um, an organization with um, uh, a two tier system, uh, we were. Uh, asking the supervisory uh, board uh, about uh, uh, any strategic uh, decision that uh, had been taken by the management function. And they were very initially happy to say that uh, this is a decision taken by the management uh, body. Uh, we will look at it once the decision is taken. Well, come on, then you will become irrelevant. And if it's not properly addressed, uh, th that not help in your organization, right? So you need to find the right balance not to come too late and to, to get your input too late. Yes, very, very good example. I would say we need to be objectively more risk based, but to, to show that we, we, we are on the right uh, side. So I, I wrote down some, some notes uh, in order to close. Uh, we are living particularly difficult times, many mm. risks, many new risks. Uh, uh, um, it, it is very clear what you mentioned, priority to the credit quality, the funding structure, the uh, is very interesting about geopolitics, uh, the, the sustainability risk, uh, cyber, uh, outsourcing, uh, transition risk uh, about climate, uh, uh, data quality risks, so um, it, it is uh, something uh, quite impressive uh, compared to the language uh, we uh, used a uh, few years ago. Uh, and it is very important uh, from our side uh, to be able to have uh, um, adequate skills uh, within our departments in order to be able to face uh, the, new, uh, the new risks. This is very challenging for, for us. Very important, uh, our role, uh, um, with the, the, the board members, with the top managers, uh, uh, to adapt uh, uh, rapidly uh, uh, the, the bank in order to, to, to be able to, to, to face uh, the risks in a better way. The quality of debate, of debate uh, our debate with uh, the board of directors, uh, to be able to inform uh, uh, properly. Um, we enable the sustainability of, of the company is a very, very nice uh, expression that I wrote down. Um, let me close with uh, an optimistic view. Uh, <laughs> new, more risks can uh, give us also more opportunities. Yeah, uh, indeed. The diversification of the business, uh, the business model is something very important, very attractive, also for the internal audit function. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, uh, our agile transformation in order to be able to be more flexible, more focused on the new risks, the new way of working. We, this morning we, we have uh, discussed a lot about uh, the new way of working that in my opinion is uh, a new opportunity for, for us. Um, and also the, the sustainability for the planet is something where the banks can have mm. a very strategic and important role. And once again, for the internal auditor 
uh, of the banks is something uh, very, very important. So thank you very much uh, from all uh, of us, all not, not only Paco and me, but uh, also from uh, the, um, our banking committee and from all the attendees. I would say that uh, this, uh, our uh, session uh, was a demonstration of a possible two ways of relationship within us and uh, ECB. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, for your availability. And You're very much welcome. Thank you, Ramon. Yeah, thank, thank you, you very much. much. Thank you. Bye. And Bye. now I, I leave the floor to uh, Maria Rontogianni uh, from the uh, Banking Committee for the next session. Thank you very much.